So Julian, it seems like you, your, your perceptive of the Bible is rooted in bitterness and some kind of anger. It contradicts itself because evolution says nothing created everything. Nothing created everything. Explosion but maybe God, came from nothing. Maybe God started that explosion. I know, but scientists don't say that. Some do. Yeah. Some, ex some uh, Daw uh, Dawkins accepts there must be some original cause. He doesn't call it God, but you could call it God. Um, so the uncaused cause. The uncaused cause. The chain cause. reaction. So he changed emotion. his argument. Dawkins from saying nothing created everything when he was challenged yeah. to uncaused cause. And, and Dawkins has accepted the reason that he why can't say uh, for certain that God doesn't exist. So he's an agnostic. So exactly, he changed his uh, stance because okay. he was first saying nothing created everything. He was very adamant in that he was very debating um, one of the Christian called I think yeah. Stephen Lennon. I'm not sure if I got his name right, but yeah, he changed his stance. Okay. So doesn't that show that belief in evil? He hasn't left his belief in evolution. Yeah, but what so does evolution say? Not Richard Dawkins. What is the the, the theory of evolution? Belief? Is that theory? Yes. Uh, human beings, as all creature, uh, creatures, evolved from lesser beings over long periods of time. So through, how do we know through survival of the fittest? How do we well, know? Uh, people like um, the guy who went to the Galapagos Islands. What's it called? Uh, Darwin, Charles Darwin, studied the creatures and saw that certain creatures adapted to live in their, in their surroundings. I don't, have, I don't have a problem with that, but okay. there's no creature that evolved in, into another kind, from one kind to another kind. No, well, adaption, yes, but there's well, no wait, kind I mean, how, how, to another kind. How, how different would a creature have to be for you to accept that it well, you evolved. believe we've evolved. Well, okay, well, you believe we've adapted. We, we're using different words. Yeah, but evolution says that we have evolved from monkeys. That, or salamander who has six, six that, legs. That, that we and apes evolved from a common ancestor. Okay. It's not that we evolved from apes. So that's a change of kind. It's that we have a common ancestor. Common ancestor, okay. But, uh, and some went this way, some went that way. May, may I ask where your heritage lies? Where, where you Ethiopia. From? Ethiopia. Okay, my heritage is Ireland. I'm from Ireland okay. originally. Why do you and I look different? Because we're from a different Because our ancestors world. lived in different Yeah, but we're still humans. We are still humans, but... No change how, of kind. How has my skin and eyes evolved to be lighter colour than yours? Um, that's a question to ask later on because that's quite deep. It's a, it's a question. Well, what's your gut feeling? I know. Um, the colour change is from the, I believe, it's from the Tower of Babel. You believe it's from the Tower of Babel. I would say it's because people who lived the further north we went, the less vitamin D we could absorb from the sun, so we needed lighter skin that makes sense. and eyes to uh, no, absorb. No, I have no problem. That makes sense. Okay, but you, you, you immediately went to the Tower of Babel. Yeah, and because that's a where biblical answer to a scientific question. Uh, the Bible is scientific too. So I'm a Christian. I would always go to the Bible. You're welcome to jump in. You uh, you went to uh, science because I believe that's where your foundation. Is. Okay, but but you can accept that people's skin color and because phenotype of change lack, because, lack of of the, because of the regions they they were living no in. Problem. No problem with that. So why not over? thousands or millions of years could a species change so much. I mean, I, I've heard that perhaps... There's no proof. Perhaps. But is there, there's no proof of God. You are the proof of God. Thank you. The but creation we all, justifies of the okay. Creator. Okay. Well, I could say you are the, the proof of evolution. How? Oh. Because I haven't even evolved from any You have animal. personally, but thousands and thousands no, of years No, not ago. me, but humans. Okay. Where, where do you thousands think? and thousands of years ago, you just said. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Like, how do you know? 
Well, how old do you think the Earth is? According to the Bible? What, you, what, what have you concluded from everything you've learned in your life? The how Earth, old do you the think Earth, the Earth can Earth? be a million years old, Good. but the world is 6,000 years old. There's a difference between the Earth and the world. So carbon dating, etc., uh, excavations, archaeology would suggest that we can uh, dig down to 10,000 years, 20,000 years. Um, you don't think there were people around there? No. Where do you get the uh, number 6,000 from? Hi. Do you believe that people lived to 800 and uh, yeah. that sort of thing? Okay, and you take that literally? Yes. And when it says uh, the world was created in six days, you, you take that literally as yeah. well? Even though the word yom, which I believe is the Hebrew word for day, and pro uh, do you speak Amharic? Amharic. Uh, I presume it's a Semitic language as well, so how would you say day? It is Semitic, but it's not the same. How would you say the word day? Can. 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 Right. It's a word I can't even say. No, okay. But it, it comes from the same root. The word, um, the word for day actually could have meant epoch or eon. I think might be might be the key. Eon, eon so seven, uh, six stages. And science does actually concur that perhaps the universe came into existence through six stages. So if you're looking for science and religion to tie up. I would look there, rather than say, no, the world is 6,000 years old, God did it in six days, Adam and Eve, whose children must have been incestuous. I think that's a very, if you don't mind me saying, childlike, literalist understanding of the Bible. And that, that's the problem with religion, when it becomes literalist, it loses its spirituality, because you're not looking for any no, deeper doesn't. meaning. No, it doesn't. But tell me why not. Because uh, that is the only way God will accept you. So why could Shakespeare uh, use be be uh, beautiful uh, uh, metaphors uh, and, lang and symbolic language to sell stories? And Jesus himself told parables. Perhaps you took the story of the, uh, the Good Samaritan literally. And Jesus was just giving a factual account of something that happened. But really, he was giving a message through a beautiful story. Why would you know why he why gave would that story? Sorry. The, I, the I reason why he gave that story to is teach us to, te to the treat Jews, people well. The Jews hated the Samaritans. Okay. And he gave that story to say, you should, you should love everyone. So in his wisdom, he told us a story that wasn't literally true, but was much truer than that. Yeah. Why can't the Bible, yeah. as thick as that, yeah. be so much more than just a literal, literal, factual, historical account of the, of the creation of the world. I mean, we don't need that. We don't need to know how the world was created. What we need to know is why it was created and how we should treat each other. Yeah, and God told us why it's created. Why? Well, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God said, Let us make a man in our image, in our likeness. Let them have dominion over the earth. Yeah? fish, cattle, everything that creeps up on the earth. And then you move fast forward to Isaiah 48, 16, where it says, God did not create the earth to be inhabited, created it to be habited, so people can dominate and can procreate and live life and glorify God through them. Do you Those are the reasons. Do you accept the world to be round? You mean circle? Spherical, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. According to the Bible, yes. Okay, according to and you and the Bible backs that up. Yes, I believe in Jeremiah. I forgot the verse, but it's in Jeremiah. The there are some religious people who really, really want to cling to their ideas that the Earth is flat. Sorry. According to the Bible, the Earth is round. Okay, good. But I've met Christians who say no, the Bible is flat. I've met Muslims who say, oh, sorry, the world is flat. Uh, and they use their scripture to try yeah, the Bible is flat. Uh, no, they, they use the scripture to try and I understand re it. Uh, reinforce that argument. Uh, but surely religion and God must be vastly complicated. And to, to me, it is the infant mentality. I, and no offense, I, I say this with love and I really respect you for sitting down and speaking to me, not many people. Why do you say it's infant mentality? Because we get told these stories and if you told a child 
a story such as the Good Samaritan, they might not get, ah, that story wasn't literally true, was it? It was to show me a, a value, it has a moral. And the infant mentality is, okay, God created the, the world in six days, D day means 24 hours, I know what day means. Uh, and they stick with that, but as we said, the word yom means uh, epoch or eon or period of time. It could, it could mean something vastly more beautiful and complicated than a storybook uh, version of, yeah, six days, uh, the earth on this day, the, the birds of the sky. I mean, it, it, to me, it's just so, that's very, very, um, I can't think of another word other than infantile. And I do know spiritual people who have a strong, strong, passionate belief in God who don't take it literally. And I asked a, uh, a priest uh, one time, is the Bible literally true? And he said, no, it's much truer than that. And that, that, always, that always stuck with me. Okay. I'll, I'll come, come back at me with, with a scripture. No, no. I wanted you to give me a, a proof of evolution. Okay. A kind change to another kind. I'm going to read this. And then, okay. It says, as long as the earth endures, sea time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. This is what God said about the earth. Okay. So as long they will never see. Yeah? As long yeah. as the earth endures, sea so time and heat is cold and day and night. Well, not in Cuba, man. This is London. That's literally. Yeah. That's why we have seasons, days. God doesn't have a problem with these things. Okay. Good. Well, well uh, we're, we're getting somewhere. As, as for a proof of evolution, yeah. I am not a scientist and I'm not a scholar. But if, on one hand, there's a theory that we evolved over thousands of years from beings that looked like us and we look very very similar to apes we look more similar to some apes than others um, we have less hair there's um, uh, an idea the aquatic ape theory which you should look into that suggests we evolved from apes that were living submerged in water and we had to wade around that's why we lost hair, that's why we can hold our breath, How do that's you why we stand up. This is, this is a, a theory that someone has put forward. To, uh, do you believe it? I'm open-minded to it and it makes much more sense and it's based on much more logic than a book that is 6,000 years old that's been translated so many times that could have so many different interpretations other than the literalist one that the infant mentality uh, is drawn towards, uh, which is now yeah, it's just does what it says on the tin we were created in six days from Adam and Eve from his grid I mean seriously I've been as, as an adult do you not question that and think well maybe the truth lies somewhere between the two well, in, in any news story Jesus we've loves got, for you to question him you'll answer well, good, all well, your good. I, I bet he would and in any story when you've got two su opposing sides uh, and it's just the same when any news story breaks and you've got BBC saying one thing and Russia Today saying another the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle maybe the truth lies in the middle of the fact that yes there is a benevolent loving God that created the universe which is beautiful and it's amazing that we've got people we can meet and I'm so glad that I can sit down and uh, talk to you that's the kind of thing that makes me believe in God not a story for children about a wrathful vengeful jealous God who doesn't let you eat pork doesn't let you wear wool of a different uh, um, cloth uh, and made the world in, in six days and if you're good you'll be rewarded infinitely and if you're bad you'll be punished infinitely. so can you remind me your name Julian Julian yeah? and it's Daniel right? Daniel yes so Julian it seems like you your your perceptive of the Bible is rooted in bitterness and some kind of anger towards it sorry if I uh, seem angry I, I, no I'm no just that's fine it's fine, it's fine yeah that's fine though. but we're humans we have yeah. emotions so yeah yeah um, the Bible always said yeah, how God loves humans, how God loves us. Yeah? And it seems like you are picking the verses that God has also wrath on. Yeah? God hates evil. So if there is evil, God hates it. Just as we hate evil, if someone, if you see someone getting raped, you're not going to say, yeah, that's fine. you're going to hate it. You would hate it. Or someone getting beaten up. So, when Jesus Christ said, 
Yeah? You, we wouldn't have this conversation yeah, if, if it wasn't for the Bible. Did you know? Because this country is built upon the Judeo-Christian values. Yeah? The King James Bible? No, the Judeo-Christian okay. values. The values, not the yeah. King James Bible. <laughs> wow. So, um, yeah, that's one version. Um, Jesus said, love your enemies. Pray for those who despite for you and persecute you. He put that standard very, very high. Yeah? yeah? What standard are you hating that is resisting, that's making you resistant towards God? What, why am I resistant to God? Yeah. I'm not resistant to God. I'm resistant to the religious literalism. That is a literalist interpretation of the Bible or the or the Quran. Okay, when it says love your enemies, is that literal or not? Well, is that yeah? Is that literal? Yes, that is. Because but some a literalist might say, okay, I need to go and get married to my enemy. You said love. No, it says love your yeah? enemy. If you love someone, you marry them. No, you don't. Why not? Because there are four types of love: agape, eros. Filio, filio and brotherly love, and sterego love. Okay. So which type of love did it? Agape love. Agape. That's for all humans. Okay. Yeah. So if you hate, if you, if it's your enemy, still love them as an agape love. Yeah? Okay. For the marriage love, it's eros love. You've okay. got to be attracted to them. Okay. Well, that that shows you how even the translation of the Bible is not enough. It's not good enough because there's four words for something that we've reduced to one word. Just yeah, as there's because of language. Because of language. It's not because of the Bible. We got the Greek okay. manuscripts. But that's what I'm telling maybe you. We should look at the, maybe we should look at the, the Greek more then. Because the words like eon or yom yeah. could have many different meanings. But people like yourself have interpreted it to mean, no, day means 24 hours. Like what day means in my normal everyday English language. Yeah. Yeah. God created it like that. That's why we but have how, it now. How do you, that's how why do you, we have seasons now. So you're I, living I, in that season. I don't know what seven times 24 is, but is that how, how many hours you think God took to make I believe so. the, the, the world? I believe so. Why don't you Six times 24. Six times 24. Get your calculator out. Um, why don't you, uh, just as you corrected me on the use of the word love and said there's four different interpretations or four different words. Types of love. Types so of when love. it says love here. Why don't you do that with the word yom? Yom, as I said, could mean a thousand years, could mean epoch, could mean eon, could mean age. But you're desperate for it to mean day because that's what you understand. No, in your because that's how language. we're living right here now. And that's what I read to you in Genesis 8.22. Day and night, winter and summer will never see I wonder us. which word was used for day then, if it was eon. Well, we can check it. We can check it. We can. Yeah. Genesis yeah. 8.22. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my, but you know that doesn't shake anything. If it's eon, if it's in stages and everything, it still doesn't shake anything. If you found out that the, the Earth was millions of years old, how and would you I, I feel? Said, I said to you, I agree, it yeah. could be in millions of years, okay. but the world God put on the, the Earth is 6,000 years old. And if you found out that we evolved from uh, beings that looked like apes and we had a common ancestor of apes, if you found that out, was that it? Would you give up the religion and say, well, I must have been wrong about God? Or would you adapt your faith to accommodate the new information? When that just information, for argument's sake, if we found that, out that, yeah. that evolution was true, just as I suspected all along, and we did evolve from, from uh, simpler beings, mm. would, would, would you give up on God? Can I answer it this way? Uh, any way you like. There's no rules. In the park. <laughs> Go for it. We believe that we have the truth in Jesus Christ. So nothing will shake that. But if we find out that there are kinds that have changed on that and evolution is right. Um, as I do with everything, including what I did with God and the Bible, I will analyze it, jubilize it, scrutinize it, do everything. And then find out, but I am so confident that would never happen. So, yeah, I'm with God. Appreciate your honesty. Yeah. Next time, I'll ask you about aliens. Aliens. Yeah. I'm an alien, according to the Bible. Not a literal. The, the, the daughters of God uh, came down and into bread, or the, the sons of God came down and into bread with the daughters of man. Mm -hmm. Elohim, plural. They're the angels. 
talk about that next time. Yeah, but, sure. Daniel, you've been in the lion's den. I appreciate it. <laughs> I didn't see you as a lion. No, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate it.